What's going on everybody, JCRC back with you here, and today we're going to take a look at Acro Brat number two. Yeah, nice uh, purple TPU there that I got. Really cool, printed really nice, and run it, rocking the pink propellers inside here. Now this build's pretty much the same as my other one, but there is some things that I did different. I am rocking the Runcam Micro Eagle and the Runcam DVR, as well as the new Unify Pro HV Race, which is pretty cool because it has the little screws for the UFL, so you don't have to worry about that. I've ran eh, just four packs through this so far, doing some tuning and stuff, and everything flies really good, and everything's working really well. So I want to talk real quick, because I know a lot of people are building the Acrobrats. Um, talk about tuning. My other version has Betaflight 3.4 on it. I can't get to the bootloader pin because it's in there, and I just don't want to mess with it. But since I was building a new one, I figured I would go ahead and flash 3.5 onto it. So there you have it. The newest beta flight is on here, but there's some key things that you need to do even if you just want to leave everything stock PIDs in order to make it fly good or as good as it can. So let's take a look at the tuning guides that are on here. So if we look at the 3.5 tuning guide, you start scrolling down through here and reading some stuff and the very first thing it says is to make sure to look at the 3.4 tuning notes because they apply to 3.5 also. So these, let's go back to Betaflight 3.4. And this is one thing that's really nice about that Betaflight and the devs are doing now is they're putting out actual updated wikis when they release versions, which is something that you don't see very often in this hobby. Uh, I know I've complained about iNav for months now since I've been using it because the, the wiki is so outdated even though most of it still applies but there's things that that they just don't describe very well even to this day but anyway so the first thing that we have to talk about is you know they say fly everything if things are fine start doing this start doing that and start doing that now I have found so far and some of the stuff is actually set to beta flight 3.5 by default now but you're gonna want to double check is in some situations depending upon how you're running you're going to run have to run this command here in the CLI which is for the I term relax and that's just basically gonna get rid of that I term wind up that we've been having in beta flight for a while now and it allows you to like it says reduce bounce backs after flips rolls and all that kind of stuff and then you can actually raise I up even higher and it's not going to give you those negative effects now I'm like I am one that likes to run like kind of a stiffer quad so I always upped my eye values and this really helps things out there's a couple different kind of uh, smoothing types filter RC interpret auto and RC interpret channel this is all going to be built into the receivers tab of the new configurator and I'll show you where that's at but this will come turned on in 3.5 but you still might want to read through this to understand exactly what it is doing and right here it talks about it's removing it's removing those sharp spikes and edges that happen during um, quick flips and stuff like that and you would have to go into back black box to see this stuff and it's actually it will cause really hot motors and stuff everybody always worries about D and stuff but everything can cause hot motors inside your actual pid loop so this is pretty important here uh, they go through talking about set point weight and transition we won't talk a lot about that because 3.5 totally changes that I always ran a a uh, weight of one and a transition of like 0.3 to like 0.5 and that basically just made everything equal from stick to stick and then 0.3 to 0.5 would just basically be kind of like how heavy the quad how heavy the quad feels like slows down the stick movements just kind of gives you that smooth kind of non twitchy kind of uh, look um, they also talk about this was all about like the filtering and all that kind of stuff I don't really think you need to get into that a whole lot. The defaults on this stuff runs pretty good. And then there's actually a big change in 3.5 that we're talking about. So if you just kind of scroll down through here, it'll talk about some basic kind of stuff. If you want to read through it, go ahead. 
So let's go to the 3.5 tuning notes, and this is when everything gets kind of crazy. So this is when they start talking about the new feed forward system, and basically what it does is it pulls set point weight out of the PID loop and makes it an independent adjustment that you can change. So I guess the best way to describe this is... So the set point weight and all that stuff used to be part of the D term. So you would change your PIDs around and it would kind of change that. And you, you would see everybody changing that weight to kind of get it to stop or start after flips and rolls smoothly and all that kind of stuff. And when you change those weights, it actually would change how it felt on the sticks, whether it was slower, faster, sharper, snappier, and then it would kind of smooth things out at the end. Nobody really could explain it very well, and I can't explain it very well right now either. So what they have done is they have pulled the set point weight and all that out, and if you look in the actual PIDs here, let me go back to the screen record. If you go to the actual PIDs here, you are going to see this new adjustment right here called feed forward now when you start changing that and messing around with it what that is going to do is you can actually control how sharp or how slow the stick response and everything feels on each independent access now it's not like a one size fits all so if you like your quad to be a little sharper and snappier on the roll or the pitch then you could play with those values move them down or move them up whatever but it's nice because it's, you just don't have to like put an overall blast on everything and you're not going to hurt anything by doing it so it's great because it's pulled out of the pid loop it's added after the fact or in the middle it's added somewhere that it doesn't affect d and all that kind of stuff therefore you can pretty much i've been running just stock default d values on this 3.5 quad where my 3.4 acrobrat actually has higher d values because of that exact reason i wanted to get rid of that kind of stuff so let's go back to the tuning notes so when you read through all this and everything you get kind of caught up in these calculations don't because it's just something that you're going to have to change start with the default values which is 60 on all accesses they give you a formula if you want to type in this formula here and put in your information from like your old quad and that will give you like a transition to kind of put in i kind of just like eyeballed it and was like okay let's just do 100 and 100 seems to work right really good it says down here typically that 60 are mid-range values and 100 is a more reasonable amount for a response race oriented quad uh yeah i don't know so then they start talking about y'all and feed forward on y'all and y'all performance is something that just drives everybody crazy because there's not much authority on it, but it actually is very troublesome to the PID loop and everything else. So they give you some nice default settings here that you can try. So they give you some nice default settings here to try and I punch them in and this is, they say to turn off the I term relax and all that. I didn't like it I just left everything back at default and started changing there so that's okay they also have changed the way anti-gravity is applied applied they have two different modes now they have a smooth mode which is pretty much what everybody's going to use and that's what I'm using and then they have the step mode which is the old mode if you really had yours dialed in and that's the way that you liked it I think the smooth mode works just fine. I did all kinds of pinch pumps out there. I have raised my anti-gravity, but the thing was just holding really, really still. The last thing is going to be the dynamic notch filter tuning. So dynamic notch before they showed that it was kind of at fault because what the dynamic dot notch was doing was inside black box, it was locking on to something, but it was still leaving noise that might spike up higher or in a different place as far as the frequency and stuff goes. So they wanted to make it all the same and kind of fix it. So what they did was they improved the dynamic notch. And so now you have actual abilities here to change it. You can change how wide the dynamic notch works. You can also change the quality adjustment, which the quality adjustments they talk about right here, which is what restricts the range and how far it can move up and down the band so what i did just right off the bat is i just changed it all to the medium settings and everything seems to be working really well 
So there's more in her here that you can read about if you want to, but really when it comes down to it, everybody wants to see what the PIDs are and what the flight looks like and everything else. So let's just take a look at what's going on here. Before we get into the PID screen, we'll just look at the receiver tab because there's new stuff in here that you're going to want to look at. So this is the RC smoothing stuff that we were talking about. And they take it in another couple steps. So instead of typing in those CLI commands that you had in 3.4, or if you do a dump by three of 3.4 onto 3.5, most of this will already be set up for you. So, you know, this is the one instance here where it says that you actually want to use BiQuad instead of PT1. PT1 can give you a little bit less delay, but it provides less smoothing on your different kind of uh, filter types on RC smoothing. This is not on the actual PID loop. So I'm leaving everything like this for right now. It's working good and we'll play with more of it later. Uh, your channel smooth, all four of them. This is what goes back to the 3.4 tuning notes I was talking about. So this is the actual tab that you want to make sure that you are looking at. Now, when we get into PID tuning, if we go into uh profile three here so here's uh let me get rid of this so here's default pids on uh, bid flight 3.5 and everything here besides the rates of course and the feed forward because this should be 60. so you can see if we go to my pit profile that i have been working on which is uh right here so what I've done is I've made a little bit of increases in P. I have decreased y'all because now, since we have the feed forward, we don't need y'all on there. And if you notice that you start getting like bobbles and wobbles, you will need to start lowering your y'all uh, P now, not raising it like before. So I was getting some uh, bobbles and wobbles and stuff. So I lowered that down, have my eyes at 60s right now. These are all default. I put my feed forward at 100 and it feels pretty good. Uh, this is your old kind of like weight slider right here. So this is like kind of how thick or how strong your stick feels. I'm up to like 0.42. That's kind of like where I like mine. So the higher you go, the more responsive, the lower you go. No, I'm sorry. The higher you go, the less responsive. The lower you go, the more twitchy it's going to get. Um, and then, of course, there's throttle boost, absolute control, which are other items that are on there. I have iTerm Relax on, and that is on, um, yeah, that's on default RP. And then, of course, I have anti-gravity set to smooth, not step, so smooth is the new one. And I have it running at 8.5, and I throw in a little TPA in there. Not sure if it's needed yet or not, but I just put it there anyway. So now if we go ahead and play one of my flights here, this is the last flight that I just had uh, flown. Now it's super windy out today, so you can see everything kind of blowing right there. So obviously not the best day for tuning, but everything was really holding its line really, really well. And just really no problems at all. So I do like the way that everything is kind of set up. It feels really smooth. Overcorrecting and undercorrecting, you can see right there I've got a decent split S going on. The other one was kind of wobbling and bobbling all over the place. And I know for DVR footage, you guys might not like it and it's going to be real big and everything, but you know, it's just the easiest to do right now just to kind of show you guys what's going on. So the quad itself does need a little bit of, let's see, I think I need to make my y'all. A little bit more responsive just because when I'm doing like uh, turning and like y'all flips and stuff like that like y'all in y'all spins it feels a little slow and a little sluggish but you're really gonna have to watch the sticks because if you move that stick slow it's kind of like you know it's not like how it was before where you can kind of go kind of slow in the middle and then jerk it over you can see how i'm kind of like having problems right there getting used to to getting that like half invert and then try to finish that off uh and, and i was just totally getting blown around so i just keep bailing out of it but 
it's really different now it's not going to be the same it's going to feel you have to like really move the stick over fast in order to get it to react fast now you can change all that with the feed forward rates and everything but like i said since i have my stuff toned down i'm going to have to actually do something with that and i don't need to change my rates or super rates because everything feels fine this is all in the actual extra magic that they've thrown into Betaflight 3.5 so not going to bore you with the rest of the flight but everything is working good and i'll put out some better tuned dvr footage later on after i work on the tune a little bit more but everything is yeah flying good so i'm pretty pretty happy with it so that is a lot of information in like a 10 minute video and i hope i kind of described and gave a little bit of advice to everybody as far as what to do i'm going to work on a lot more of these little things especially on the aqua brat because it's really all i'm flying and tuning right now i have two of them my other quads are fine i'm not touching them i'm not a firmware chaser anymore i only put 3.5 on here because it was new and i didn't want to have to go digging the buttons out to like flash it all over again because that impulse rc driver fixer just does not work every time for some reason so that's going to do it hopefully this was somewhat informative and educational we'll talk to you guys later